Good morning, students. So our topic for today is how does blood travel through your body? Before we formally start the topic, I will just introduce to you the vocabulary word for today. So that is cardia. Cardia is a Greek word and then the English for that one means heart. We have here the word cardiology. What does it mean? Cardiology means is the study of heart. Cardio is from the word cardia, which means heart, and logi is a suffix word for study. Let's have some few words that has the suffix logi. So this is medical terms. Cardiology is the study of heart. Hematology is the study of blood. Usually you can see this one in the hospital, in the laboratory, where you extract your blood. Because usually they study the blood chemistry of your blood now psychology is the study of mind and mental disorder oncology is the study of tumors and uh, neurology is the study of nerves brain and spinal cord and rheumatology is the study of joint diseases let's go back to our topic the key point for today is this in the first loop blood travels from the heart to the lungs. So this is the first loop of the circulatory system. The second loop, blood travels from the heart throughout the body and then back to the heart again. So this is the second loop. So this is just like a highway system, like a road system of how blood travels to our body. Then this is the second loop. This way is going to the lungs and then this way is going to the other body organs. In this uh, loop, there are three kinds of blood vessels responsible for taking away and taking in blood in our body. The first blood vessel that is mentioned is arteries. Arteries is responsible for taking away the heart. If you can see here the arrow, it's going out from the heart, right? Here is artery also. So it takes away the blood to our heart another uh, kind of blood vessel mentioned here is the capillaries capillaries it is just like the exchange section okay the exchange section why we call it as an exchange section when blood passes through here blood gets the oxygen in the lungs okay once that once happened, it goes back to the heart. And then veins is a blood vessel responsible for carrying blood to the heart again. So I will repeat. Three blood vessels mentioned here in this loop is arteries, capillaries, and veins. Without these blood vessels, heart will just pump but there is no highway or delivering system that will take the blood in the entire body. So heart, arteries, capillaries, and veins are working together to deliver the blood in the entire body. Now, let's try to answer this one. Two loops. Your heart can pump 5 liters of blood through 2 loops in each minute. Imagine in 1 minute, the blood, uh, what I mean, the heart can pump blood in the amount of 5 liters or in the volume of 5 liters. Imagine 1 minute, it, can, it could pump 5 liters. So let's try to interpret this diagram. In each box, Write where the blood from the heart travels to, then tell where the blood travels after. It leaves each part listed below. So, remember yesterday, I used this illustration so that you could understand how blood travels. This box represents the heart. So, you have here four chambers, four chambers here. Right atrium the left atrium, right ventricle, and then the left ventricle. 
the color symbolizes uh, the oxygenated blood for blue and oxygenated blood for red. So let's start the process. It says here, right atrium, after the blood enters to the right atrium, which is here, next to that one, it enters to the right ventricle. That's why we wrote here, right, it enters to the right ventricle. Now, let's go here. Veins from the body. So this is the vein, right? After blood passes through the vein, it goes here to the left atrium. Okay? Now, how about if the arteries to the lungs? So this is the arteries going to the lungs. It says here it enters capillaries in the lungs. So blood enters the arteries and then it goes to the capillaries in the lungs to collect the oxygen. Okay, so that is uh, this diagram is pertaining to. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, let's do some math here. When you exercise, your heart pumps more blood through your body than you are resting. So this graph will show you the flow of blood pumps in a minute. So remember, in the first illustration, it says that heart could pump 5 liters of blood in a minute. So, 5 uh, liters is equivalent to 5,000 centimeter, cubic centimeter. I will repeat. 5 liters is equals to 5 cubic centimeter. Uh, 5,000 cubic centimeter. Okay, that's why here. It says 5,000. That is at rest. And then when you're doing exercise, it reaches to 25,000 cubic centimeter. Now, the first question is, read the graph. About how much more blood flows through the body during the exercise? exercise than at rest. So you need to compare. So when you are comparing, remember in math, you need to subtract. So let's subtract 25,000 cubic centimeter to 5,000 cubic centimeter. So that is 20,000 cubic centimeter. Now, number two, calculate about how much blood flows through the body in each second at rest. And then how about during exercise? Okay, so what I do is, it says here I need to calculate the rest. And then I also need to calculate during exercise. So let's do first uh, blood flows during at rest. So during at rest, you have 5,000 cubic centimeter. And then it is asking about the second. So we need to divide. So 5,000 cubic centimeter divided to 60 second. Why I need to divide? Because this is in minute. So I need to convert that one into second. So one minute is equivalent to 60 second. So you need to divide 5,000 cubic centimeter divided by 60 is equal to 83.3 cubic centimeter per second. Meaning the blood is pumping 5,000 cubic centimeter in one second. So that is a lot. And then, when you are doing exercise, it is more. Why? Because your heart pumps faster when you're moving, when you're doing exercise. So here, that is 25,000 cubic centimeter divided by 60 second. The answer is 416.7 cubic centimeter per second when you're doing exercise. Okay, so number three. Uh, why do you think the rate that the blood flows through the body is greater? 
or why it is increasing during exercise time compared to at rest. Your body knows that the muscle needs more oxygen during the exercise. So this is the reason, girls, why blood is pumping more blood during at work. Because the muscle needs oxygen and then that oxygen is needed to work. If our muscle don't have oxygen, it will be weak. So the heart is pumping greater uh, blood so that it can capture more oxygen and then it will deliver in our body and then to our muscles. Okay, so let's go to assessment or assessing your understanding. 2A. Where does blood return from the lungs enters the heart? So it enters the left atrium. I will repeat the question. Where does the blood returning from the lungs uh, when it enters the heart? It enters the left atrium. So remember this uh, picture. It says here, where does the blood returning from the lungs? So uh, here, right? It goes from the lungs. So after the after going to the lungs, it goes to the left atrium. Okay. Letter B. Draw a conclusion. Why must your blood complete both loops to keep you healthy? Why it need Why it needs to go to both loop? Okay. Why? Possible answer is it need, we need, okay, I need one loop to get oxygen and then into my blood and then the other loop to deliver oxygen to my cell. I will repeat, the possible answer is I need one loop to get oxygen into my blood and then the other loop delivers oxygen to my cell or to my muscles. Okay, now next here. I know that blood travels through the body in two loops. One loop goes to the lungs and then the other loop goes to the body organs. Okay, girls. So if you have some question about this topic, you would send it via uh, WhatsApp or in Clasera. Thank you, girls, for listening. Bye.